Man. Again. Okay. The more the merrier. I don't know if I'll ever get it. I've been asking for like peace stop talks. We have not got them. Like this, I can directly upload this on YouTube channel. It's not as hard. Alright, so if you have a hack, you decapitate without praying right now. So, in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, um, dear God, thank you for us being here. I ask that you bring down your Holy Spirit and you speak through Aaron and you, through his words, say what these kids need to hear. You're, he's your faithful servant. So I just ask that you come down and you use him, and he can speak words that these people are going to. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Thank you, Eric. Hola, hola, hola. Quien aquí habla español, no me entienda. Fantástico. Queremos oír un chiste. Okay. Tengo dos manzanas en cada mano. ¿Qué tengo? No, tengo manotas. Alright. For those who don't speak Spanish, I can't translate the joke because it's like one of those pun word, pun jokes in Spanish. Anyways, so my name is Aaron, and I'm here as a normal person. I have faith. I have my insecurities, like y'all. I'm um, not perfect, I'm really flawed, but bear with me, you stuck it out with me this far. To write this and to speak this talk, I feel so undeserving. As I stand right in front of y'all, I feel not qualified. Lord and Victor had to discern about who was going to give this talk. And in the blink of an eye, anything could go wrong, and in an error, I could turn around and say anything I want to y'all. A lot of things has to go into these talks, and that's why Victor called me. I had to make sure he had the right guy, because I questioned him. They put me here to speak about discernment. In the simplest definition, discernment is nothing more than the ability to decide between truth and error, right and wrong. Discernment is the process of making careful distinctions in our thinking about truth. In other words, the ability to think with discernment is synonymous with the ability to think biblically. In other words, if it's right and wrong in the Bible or within our church, it's right or wrong. But I'm going to point out who was not qualified in the Bible, but did amazing things anyways. So King David, he was poor, and when he grew up, he became a king. He was an adulterer, murderer, terrible father. He wrote all the Psalms, though, led a mighty army, and was a king fit to be the ancestor of Jesus Christ. Noah was a drunk, but he carried all the animals that went forth and multiplied. Abraham was too old, but still had Isaac. Isaac was a daydreamer. Moses had a stutter, was an orphan, and a murderer, but led the Israelites. Yet he chose this killer to be a fulfiller to perform his miracles. Leah was ugly. Joseph was abused, but was the first documented stepfather and it was the stepfather for the king of the kings. Sorry, my laptop. Samson had long hair and was a womanizer. Mark was a tax collector, the lowest of the low, and still walked beside Jesus Christ. Peter denied Christ not once, not twice, but three times, and still walked with him. See, Christ didn't come to die for the perfect, 
Christ came to die for the imperfect. God is in this different kind of business. He calls those who are not qualified. So being not qualified is where it starts. As Catholics, the church has three wonderful selections. You got the single life, the married life, and you got religious life. Around our age, you got to start recognizing like what path you want to take. And I'm not here to talk about those paths. I'm here to talk about these guidelines and how to get to them. So sometimes, us adults forget what it is to be young, and we're going to tell you what it. We're going to tell you to look at a painting, and tell you to look at it this way, when obviously you see it that way. Has anyone ever felt this restlessness, restlessness in their heart? Maybe it was for a school activity, or going to a vacation place. Maybe it was a restlessness for something more. We, may, we were made to pursue God. St. Augustine quotes, you, may, you have made us for yourself and our hearts and restlessness until they can find rest in you. Remember, when I said God was in a different business, awesome blossom. I don't know God personally, but I have a hunch that we're supposed to ask questions. After all, how are we supposed to end up to our destination without being a little bit curious? God wants us to question. We're supposed to wonder what our purpose in life is. We're supposed to pray to him and find our destination. He has this unconditional love that wraps us around and he carries us when we are weak. An unconditional love that we need to learn to have. Jesus didn't die for the perfect. He died for all the sinners like you and I. So I'm gonna share the easiest way to find your purpose in life, to go through everything. And then it's follow your heart. Anyways, <laughs> um, so you hear it said a lot, and you're going to hear it a lot as you grow older, but it's something that people don't actually do. It's something that needs to be actually executed. See, yesterday, before I came in to give this talk, before I left the school, these two nuns came up to me and they were looking for a parking spot at Texas Tech. And I asked them, I'm gonna give this talk, what do you guys have advice? And they gave me the most beautiful advice. And they said, all you young people can hear God directly. That blew my mind because God comes to you in different shapes and forms. And you listen to him immediately and see us older kids we have to be like told multiple times that our answer is right there, and yet we're still like, nah, it's something else. But you, you guys know when God's speaking through you. I'm not saying that life will be perfect, and it's never will be perfect. On bad days, you'll be, you'll be hurting, on other days, you'll be really pumped up. And that's totally okay. Because life is like that. But just know, at the very end of the day, you're going to head to your destination. God feels everything that we do. So if you're hurting, he's hurting. If he's sad, he's, he's sad. Understand that he just wants you to be with him. You were made to pursue him. And everything that you were to do, I like drinking water. I prefer it over any drink in this establishment or in life. And obviously they gave me a bottle of water and I chose a glass of water for a specific reason. So my mom has this thing about God and it's the thing about water. How do you see God? Everyone you ask will have a different story. The babies, the animals, your friends right next to you? See, my mom replies to this question. We have artificial idols, fake fur, leather, pearls, and even diamonds. Mankind has been able to replicate almost everything but water. Nothing has been able to replace water. And according to the law of conservation of mass, water cannot be created or destroyed. 
God is not able to be replicated. She explained how we need water in the inside of our body to keep us nourished, and how our body needs water on the outside to keep us clean. It is the same way that we need God in the inside for the spirit of our soul on the outside to keep my body righteous. How the water in the sea keeps all the animals with life feeds not only the animals in the sea, but all those people on land. You're not able to stand on one side of the sea and see the other. So how do you know if you're standing on the edge of the beginning or on the edge of the end? It's like God. You don't know if he has a beginning or if he doesn't have an end. We are his creation from each grain of sand to the highest star in the sky to the depth of the sea. Man has to continue to search like how we continue to search God's unconditional love. But we might never know where it ends.